And it's four o'clock, so you are now on my dime. Okay, so are people familiar with the different critical infrastructures? Yes, okay. So, anybody in healthcare, please raise your hands. Nobody in healthcare. Uh, anybody in transportation, please raise your hands. Nobody in transportation. Anybody, one person in transportation, okay. Uh, anybody in critical manufacturing? Energy? Okay, you guys are already sitting together, that's good. You guys work together or get to know each other now? Um, finance. And you're the only one raising your hand. Two. Okay, can you two like move closer together and become friends? She's, she's behind you. She looks like a nice lady. Um, so first thing I want everybody to like get to know each other and get to know each other. And when we're ready, just give me a thumbs up sign because I'm just going to ramble. So I'm assuming we're ready. Okay. So recording and everything good. Okay. Um, I want people in the same industries to sit together for a reason. And like I said, you'll find out at the last slide. But I want you guys to actually take the time to exchange business cards, email addresses, phone numbers, or whatever. And again, it ties into the last slide. And I just realized there is one important thing I forgot to do. I'll just do it live when we get to it. This is going to be a different kind of talk. I'm going to try to take, tell you what I believe threat intelligence is. And I'm going to take you from not having a threat intelligence program today to having the basics to do either incident response plus or actually doing basic threat intelligence. I'm going to tell you my experiences over the last two years, taking a threat intelligence program that I joined, that everybody else left, and trying to rebuild it from the ground up, and then being changing jobs to a new company doing threat intelligence there, where we're actually remodeling our, our program again. And so who am I? My name is Chris. I have over 20 years experience in information technology and security. Uh, you can read that fancy stuff up there. Like I said, I've done threat intelligence for the last two years and have to have built one program from the ground up and now I'm helping you build a new one. Um, so what is threat intelligence? Well, what it's not is empire building. You're not there to try to convince people that you should be the, the sole person that says, this is threat intelligence and this is how we're going to do security, right? Don't be that guy. Um, don't use fear, uncertainty, and doubt. If it's not a fact, make sure they know you're telling them it's your thoughts, not a fact. It's not a way to grow your budget. You know, don't just go out and start spending money and throwing money at things to say, hey, we have a threat intelligence program because we've bought 30 different data feeds. Um, it's not just buzzword marketing. There is actually something to it. It is really in the beginning is becoming really good at being a post-mortem expert in events and incidents. So you're going to be looking at the things that have happened on your network first to figure out what they look like and then try to get ahead of them being the end result so you cut them off sooner. So what is threat intelligence? It's a lot of research. It's being able to answer a question in 30 seconds when the CEO calls up your, your CISO, your CISO calls up your director, your director calls the manager, and the manager walks over to your desk and says, what is WCRY? And you've just walked back from lunch and haven't been looking at the internet all day. But you need to have an answer in five minutes. So it's about doing research and doing it well. Um, it's being able to answer things quickly. But most importantly, it is about giving contextual data in the form of information to your management or whoever your stakeholder is in order to make a decision and act on that. So it doesn't mean that the stakeholder is going to just be your manager. It could be the SOC analyst. It could be the forensics team. It could be your legal team. But it's whoever you're working with that needs to make some kind of a decision. So before we get going, a little bit of basic definitions, right? Um, data are facts, right? The sky is, the sky is blue is a fact. And you guys are going to hate that phrase by the time I'm done because that's kind of become my mantra. Um, but that tells me nothing. And we'll get back to that in a minute. Information is taking that data, putting the different pieces of data together into a context that means something. So if you have an attacker on your network and you're seeing them use PowerShell, well, admins use PowerShell too. So you need more context than, oh, somebody's using PowerShell on the network. You need to be able to figure out 
they're using PowerShell on the network from this IP address, which then says, is this something I need to worry about or is this something that I, I don't need to worry about? Is that IP address my VPN connection? And is it a person that's supposed to be using PowerShell? Or, so context matters. And you're, you're taking the different data points from the logs, putting them together, and you're building something that's actionable off of that. So basically, you want to go through the intelligence lifecycle. And we're going to see a, the way I prefer to do the intelligence lifecycle in a minute, but, well, actually, you're close to the end. You need to plan. You need to collect. You need to process. I'll actually go into all these. So have a plan going forward. What do you support? What do you do? What is your goal? How do you do things? What are your data sources? Where do you collect your information from, right? So that's the planning portion. You're going through, and you're not just walking into the middle of a fire and saying, oh, I left the hoses at home, right? You're walking in, and it's like, okay, I'm here. My fire extinguishers are over there. My fire hose is over there. And the ladder's behind me coming up in the next truck. Ooh, nobody told me there's train tracks behind me. Um, collect data, right? So you're going to collect, and you're going to analyze that in a few minutes. But you're going to collect it. And you need to make sure you're collecting it from good sources, not, not bad sources. And we'll talk about that in a few seconds in a couple slides coming up, right? But you need to collect your information and make sure it's readily available when you need it. You also need to process that information, put it somewhere where it's handy to have it, handy to store it, easy to retrieve it. But you can't just have a, a big pile of data sitting there looking at it and saying, Oh, yes, we have all this data. Well, that's great. You have all this data. What's it do for you? Is it just data or is it information? You need to analyze it and make sure that it's actually, again, relevant. Do I really care that, um, what's a good one? Uh, do I really care that employees are going to Facebook on their lunch break? Sometimes yes, depending on your industry, you know. How are they, you know, and based on your policies. So sometimes yes, sometimes no. But you need to analyze that data and make sure the data that you have is actually worth having, breaking it apart and being able to answer questions based off that data. And then lastly, you need to be able to disseminate that out, push it to everybody, and share it around between yourselves, amongst your communities, and everywhere else. Um, so that's the basic life cycle. And the one question is, you must be tall, this tall to ride this ride, right? I do not like paid data feeds. I think they're great if you've already got the basics done and you're already doing the basics. But if you're going out and buying a feed from a vendor, you're trying to run before you're walking. You're at the crawl stage at this point, or at least that's where I'm assuming you're at if you're coming to a talk about the basics. Now that could be a bad sign of me, but I've seen some people smile. So I'm assuming that you don't have a program in place or you don't realize you have a program in place. Like I said, you're going to be post-mortem experts at the beginning because that's what it's going to take. You're going to be going through your old logs, your old tickets, looking for things, right? But you need to have the bare basics. And in this case, the bare basics are going to be things like DNS logs. Where are users going? Where are processes on users' computers going, right? If you've got things set up properly and you're looking for a um, digitally gener generated algorithm domain name, right? So it's this, a, a collection of like eight random characters. It looks like part of a hash at .ru or .io or .us or any dot .whatever. Why are they going there? What are they doing? You need to be able to look at that and say, this is an interesting data point. I need more information. But you also put that in context. Is that my mail server going there? Is that my user going there? Is that the web server going there? Is that the payroll database going there? Right? And that's going to, the answer's going to come from your DNS logs. Proxy logs, same thing. That's going to be more your users than anything else. Firewall logs, firewall connections, tear up, tear downs, might be simple ones like I've used, to, I'm used to dealing with. I'm, so I'm used to seeing this IP address, can create a session of this IP address on this port. Right? But the question is why? And that's what you're trying to answer, the whys. Does it matter? Why does it matter? Is it good or not? And then moving on. 
And then again, mail logs, because you don't want to see lots of mail going out. You need to know the basics, the who, who sent, the, who sent what to who, when did they send it, and what did they say they were sending versus what they actually sent. So, hey, what's for lunch today? And you got the giant um, attachment attached to it. Unless they're sending out the coupons for the local pizzeria, that's, that should raise a flag, right? And that's something you need to be able to see. Now, who sees that and where you're watching that? Well, again, you need to know where to look. So, again, logs. I've said a couple times you're going to be a postmortem expert. Does anybody recognize some of the pictures I've used so far? Good. So you need to be a postmortem expert. You need to go through your, your tickets to see what's happened today. The first thing I've done at my new job was start going through all of our inconclusive tickets, the ones that weren't false positives and the ones that weren't true positives, to figure out what's going on. Why are we saying that we don't have enough information for these tickets to actually work them? And we, that's one of our, sorry, that's one of our, uh, ooh, I might have actually broke that. Um, that's one of our, our requirements. The clip came off and there's nowhere to like put it back in. Um, go through, find out what's going on. You can still hear me, right? Okay. Um, I just think I broke the belt loop thing. Sorry. <laughs> You guys get to see the fun stuff, and then the people on the video are going to be like, okay. The people on the video later are going to be like, oh man, this guy is, he keeps breaking topic. But, so my, my job to start with was to go through the tickets and figure out why they're being closed in the manner they're being closed. Are we actually fixing the problem? Was it something that should have came to my team and didn't? You know, was there something else? And in the process, you're going to find, that, and I've done this in two jobs now, you're going to find gaps. You're going to find where logs aren't being captured, or they're being captured in a way that you can't get them in um, the time required for regulatory um, abilities, right? So like PCI, technically it's not regulation, it's a standard, says that you have to be able to pull your logs quickly to go through the data to find out what's in there. They don't actually give you a time frame, but at the same time, HIPAA says, so yeah, I used to work in healthcare at some point in my life. HIPAA says that you have to be able to provide the information to the office of the um, um, OCR, which is the Office of Civil Rights, within X number of days. And if you're spending 45 of those days trying to get your logs from your logging team, that's a gap that you gotta fix. And that's gonna be the threat intel team that's gonna find it. Or it's gonna be your incident response team that finds it in the middle of an incident when the company's gonna be in trouble. So you need a lower look, and the best, the best place I like to start with is the tickets. Yes, post-mortem expert again. You're gonna go through the tickets, you're gonna find out what's going on. Build a spreadsheet, and you're gonna see those in a few minutes, spreadsheets of dooms, um, and start building up what you see in your tickets. This will start giving you a view. Now if you've got enough, enough manpower, you can start looking at your, your true closed tickets or your false positive tickets and start seeing if there's actually trending um, trending events, like are you seeing the same malware family showing up again and again and again on your network, either as a true positive, a false positive, or inconclusive, and seeing what you've got there. So look at your tickets. I, I said this is my mantra, the sky is blue, right? The sky is blue, that's a data point. But does that give me enough information to go out and make an action? I'm asking you a serious question. By me telling you the sky is blue, is that enough to know what you need to take with you? No, people are saying no. The sky is blue and cloudy. Okay, there's some clouds there. Is that enough information? You know if you need to take an umbrella, a hat. Hey, this, it's a nice beautiful day out, the sky is blue, there's some clouds in the distance, but they look nice and fluffy or nice and happy. It's a beautiful day. Is that enough information? Actually, it is. At that point, I know to take a hat, sunglasses, and sunscreen. So context matters, and having enough context, right? You've got multiple points here. You know the sky is blue, you know it's a nice day out, and you know that the clouds are in the distance and it doesn't look threatening. So that's three points of, three points of contact that you now have to actually go out and make a decision. Um, has everybody seen this before? Is this new to anybody? So one thing I love about this is 
trivial, easy, annoying, challenging, and tough. That's true for both sides of the equation. That's true for the miscreants that you're trying to punch, and that's true for you as a defender trying to find them in your network. Certain things are easier to find than others, but the things that are easy to find, like the hashes, are things that are easiest to change. So that works on both sides. Okay, bad pun time. Information, try to excel at it. So when you're getting started and you need some place to put your data, because you need some place to store it, the best place to start with is literally Excel. Or your spreadsheet program of choice, whatever it is. Um, but most people, you say Excel, they think spreadsheet. So in this case, I'm collecting the date, the ticket number, the indicator type, and the IOC. And these are all Circle City. So that's the hash for the image on the Circle City website, the IP address for the Circle City website, and the curl agent I use at the time to go and collect some of the information. Um, so this is one ticket, right? I have three different indicators in it. It tells me that somebody's used a command line to access a web server and look at a file. Now, it took a little bit more to get to the hash, but that was basic three steps that were here and we're seeing. And those are okay indicators. Um, but you're going to have other kind. And I can find the right window. And I really do apologize for this one because I was hoping to actually have real log files for you guys to look at. Unfortunately, the best I can only do is emailed partial logs. I was actually going to go to a web server, pull up some logs, and have you pick out IOCs from the logs. So instead, I'm going to show you emails I get from my WordPress server and ask you, does this make a good indicator or not? And then we're actually going to put them into a spreadsheet. So if you came here for the hands-on portion, well, this is it. And we're going to do this a couple times throughout, right? So I use a tool on my WordPress server. It's called WordFence. It sends me information. Make this a little bit bigger. And you can't see that. How do I? Is it a case of duplicate or is it a case of slot? Oh, it's slide. OK. Now I can't see it. OK, so it's my WordPress server. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, so looking at this block here, somebody tried to sign in with the name Radis, which is my Twitter handle. And it's the name of my domain, right? Is that a good indicator? Anybody? Okay, nodding heads of yes. Anybody disagree with that? Is that a good indicator or is that a bad indicator? Not sure. Don't feel bad if you're wrong. So somebody's trying to log into the server, right? Attack or attempted compromise or compromise itself. So if you're looking at the if you're looking at the logs, right, would I care to track the fact that they're trying to log in as me? Or anything. So if you have a log, right, and you're looking for any kind of indicator, an indicator of attack, an indicator of compromise, right? The only two differences there between attack and compromise is they're trying to get in versus they got in. You're going back through and you're looking through your logs to see when the events happened, how they happened, right? So let's put our response hats on for a minute. Even though this is talk about threat intelligence, you're going to be taking data from other teams. Other teams are going to come with you. And it's like, hey, we saw this guy trying to log in 30 times from these IP addresses. Can you tell us more about them? Or can you, are you seeing more things here? Or you might be going through a ticket review and seeing this thing popping up time after time after time. Now, in this case, it's a failure because that's not a valid username. But would you track the username? Track the IP. When would I care about tracking the username? Or any other authorized user? Now, remember, I also said the domain name that they're going against is called Radis. It's radis.net. 
So they're trying to log into my domain using my domain name slash Twitter handle. So the people that were nodding their heads yes, you would actually track this for a little while to see who's trying to come in and how they're trying to come in. Are they doing a standard brute force attack by using admin, you know, like the basic go down the list of starting at the A's, B, C, D, E, F, G? What this tells me is this is somebody that's done a little bit of research into who owns the domain before they try logging in. So like I said, the domain here is radis.net. That's my known Twitter handle. And the person's trying to log in as Radis, assuming that I might have actually set that up as my user credentials. Now, the truth is I didn't. Um, so I want to copy the user IP and the name. So is this the right one? Yep. And we're just going to make up a ticket number for this. I gotta change this because I, I need to see what I'm doing too. I can't look over and type at the same time. I don't computer well. Linux I do well. Windows is a... GUIs are strange to me. Um, That's right. Is this still good on the video? Make this bigger. So we're going to call this ticket 01. We'll put today's date. What is today's date? June 10th. Actually, let's make that failed username. Call it zero one again. And it's cool if people want to leave. I know this talk is a little heady and odd. I do not take it personally. And now that's stuck on the other screen. And we'll see why we're doing this in a few minutes further on the slide deck. Um, another one to look at, again, same, same vein. Um, top 10 blocked IP addresses. So these are the top 10 people that tried accessing the server and failed for different reasons. Usually it's tied into trying to log in. Um, And in this case, I do want all the IP addresses. It's going to take a minute to copy them out. Because I want to see where they're coming from. I want to see who got blocked. I want to know why they got blocked. Well, in this case, I know they were blocked because they were trying to log in as a user. Um, because I saw the other emails that were associated with this coming beforehand. Um, I don't have the username. But this, so this will tell me a list of who tried getting in. So we'll call this ticket two. And it's going to take a few seconds. And this is why I said this is an hour-long talk instead of 30 minutes, because this part takes time. All right? And it's not always fun. It's not always glorious. You're not always walking up to the CEO and saying, hey, I got this information for you. Sometimes it's collecting the stuff like this. Sorry, it's not all CSI hacking. It's not all fast, glorious, and quick. It's not holding a pin in your hand like they do in Criminal Minds and having the information in 30 seconds. Now 
But back to your point earlier, normally a username you wouldn't unless it's a certain kind. Um, you guys said that you wanted to copy the admins. Sorry, I should have asked your name at the time. Um, yes, you want to copy admin and stuff like that, but I had context that I didn't realize I failed to give you people, which was server name, login names, apparatus. I mean, I gave you some of the context. Just for speeding, because people are nodding off, I'm just going to stop at this one. It's kind of bad practice, but. Um, five more login attempts. Tried, this guy tried to log in as administrator. I think this will be the last one that we do, and we'll move back into the actual slides after this. Okay, so we got a couple of IOCs to play with. We put them into a spreadsheet. We've got a way to track them. So we've got a, a start of a spreadsheet of doom. And I really wanted to show you guys MISP. So we're collecting the data. We're putting it into a spreadsheet of doom. That's the way to start. I tried four times to get MISP to install on my virtual box, and it failed every single time with the same error. Apache refused to start. Um, and it kept showing errors from Sys Control. So, but MISP is nice because one of the features it has, um, there's lots of different platforms out there. There's tools like Threat Connect, um, there's tools like MISP, there's crits, there's spreadsheets of doom, which has become these huge ungodly spreadsheets. Um, one of the things I like about MISP, and Chris does it as well, it will actually give you a graphical representation if you tell it to you. Yeah, C-R-I-T-S. So Chris used to have better documentation, documentation um, and the way that they handled some of the stuff on the back end was different. MISP started as malware sharing, um, and that's actually what the, the M stand, stands for in MISP is malware, whereas CRITS started as something else. And they kind of like borrowed from each other and become pretty, much, pretty close to the same beast. Um, when I took SANS Forensics 578 last year, they taught crits. It was the last time they said they were going to teach crits. They said going forward they were going to teach MISP because MISP is now doing everything that crits was doing. And it has some additional features. Um, this is a nice tool and some of the some of the mailing groups I'm on that talk threat intelligence on a regular basis, almost everybody in the group is using MISP. It can take in feeds, it can take in um, however you want to set, set a feed up, they'll come in. But the one nice thing is it will actually provide a graphical map so there's one in here that people get a good laugh out of um, down here at the bottom. Linux.microsoftwindowsupdate.org. Right? Doesn't sound sketchy at all, right? Um, but what it does is, is taking the indicators that you feed it, you click the graph icon, it'll associate the ticket number, the indicator, where other tickets has been seen in, right? So you could have a box calling out and having the same number show up seven or eight times in six or seven different tickets, and it'll show you all those tickets in a graphical format. And they're like, oh, I've got a problem. This is something that should probably go higher on the incident response team or the hunt team's looking, right? So like I said, you're doing research to disseminate to other people. And that's one of those things that we actually do at my last job and my current job. We take stuff like this from the tickets, correlate it together, and then feed it to whichever team that needs it in order to go off and do what they need to do. Um, free information is good. Like I said, you don't have to pay for your threat intelligence. You can get it for free. 
Um, who is is a good place. So if you're getting phishing campaigns, go see who owns those domains. Start putting together actors. You know, again, into a spreadsheet of doom. I'm seeing this guy using this tool or this this phone number, this email address, or this host home address. Right? Associate with those those domains and collect those. Um, one of the mailing lists I'm on, they do a um, it's called Finger Masher Guy. He's using these randomly generated domains, and the person that's doing it is taking the Whois data on a daily basis, feeding it into Basically, doing reverse who is is based on phone numbers and addresses, collecting everything that's been updated in the last 24 or 48 hours, and then puts it in the MISC and gets a nice little map. And it's like, this is what this threat group has done today. These are all their new domains. And then he mails it out to this entire mailing list. And then we share it around each other and wait for takedowns to happen and start use that information between ourselves to block the sites before the stuff starts coming into us. Um, who is shadowserver.org is nice. Uh, where is my VM window? I had it open. And you can't see it. It's so weird. You share. I'm going to share this one. So, who is Shadow Server? So, you've seen a typical who is, right? So, if I say who is circlecitycon.com, and it throws an error, and I can't see what it says. I'm really hoping I type this right because I can't see it. I didn't solve it. Circle City Con. I think that's right. Okay, so typical who is information. Tells you who the who is servers are, the nodes. It's got address information. All right, typical who is. Everybody's seen this before. And believe it or not, I spend a lot of my time on who is um, who is at domaintools.com, looking things like this up. Um, who is Shadow Server? So I took the IP address. It's given me um, the AS number, the IP address, the hosting provider, country. I'm not sure what AP, um, that might be the business name, AP Linode LLC US. So it's a little bit different information. It tells me specifically who's hosting the device, where it's, how to get to it. A little bit different than your typical who is. And that's the shadow server who is. Um, let's come back to the slides. I detect, has anybody used virus total? Everybody has used virus total, yes. Did you know that there is a Python script that will do that for you? So go back to here. Like I said, I spent a lot of time at the command line.
and it's not just searching the virus total. It's the main reason why I use it. It does search some other things. I know you've got a working network connection. So it's, scroll up a little bit, if I can do this right. I miss not having a real mouse. So it gives me results. It's checking multiple sites. It's checking blacklist. It's checking the age of the domain through URL void. Um, the PDNS entries are actually from VirusTotal. So these ones down here. Actually, I'll use the mouse, mouse pointer since I actually can on this one. Um, very solid information is here. It's a nice tool, especially if you use some of the um, command line arguments that go with it. Pull out just the information you need and then push it into a text file that's processed later. And I believe I speed this up. This is going way faster than I thought it was going to. Um, MITRE ATT&CK, it's a really great site. Um, there's a website I forgot. ATT&CK.MITRE.ORG. It's been around for about two years. Um, I guess I'll right. come back to that in a second. It's been around for about two years, but almost nobody knows about it. It's basically a collection of um, techniques common knowledge of adversaries, the tools they use. Um, so if you've got a tool that you want to look up, you can go here, search the tool, and it'll tell you all the adversaries that use it. So, you know, if you got who lives off the land, it'll give you a list of who lives off the land, which means they're using the built-in native tools. you got an EXE that's a little fishy. It's like, who uses this EXE? If it knows about it, it'll give you all the, all the attackers that use that EXE. Um, a couple other places. I know I said don't pay for your free data, but if you're going to in the beginning, Maltigo is good, Shodan IO is good. Um, two of the things I actually do on a regular basis is um, link analysis for attack adversaries. So this piece of malware, this attacker, this infrastructure, and then provide a nice pretty picture to management and say this is what we've seen for attacks. Um, Shodan IO, go out and find out what our external footprint looks like. DHS provides a service called Hygiene for U.S. companies. If you get a chance to use that, that's pretty good too. Um, I'm pretty sure it's free because you're already paying for it with your tax dollars. And it's different from Shodan. Shodan looks at what's available on the internet. Hygiene looks at the CVEs that they see on your network that are publicly facing. So basically they're looking for banners and seeing, oh, this is, this is susceptible to CVE whatever. Um, industry ISACs. They do cost money to join. I haven't seen one that's free yet. The data is usually a little bit old. It might be over sanitized, so you might be getting your own data back to you thinking it's new. I've seen that happen. Um, most recently during an outbreak of Emotech, stealing credentials, we provided information to an ISAC. We got it back two hours later, and everybody's like, ooh, look what they sent to us. And it's like, we sent that to them two hours ago. That's our list in that order. <laughs> And I'd be like, oh. Um, so information, by hook or by crook, we, we will. Basically, we will get it. Don't just go through the attack cycle one way. Sometimes you have to go backwards in order to move forward. So the best representation I ever saw of this was the information life, or the intelligence lifecycle built as a, um, agile-like image. So you have everything moving one direction but you're going back constantly to the beginning of that iteration to make sure everything's covered. Um, anything new that you found, it goes back up. So, hey, I got a plan. Well, we found a new site to look at. Let's throw that in there. Let's run that through what we've done so far. Pull out the additional information from the, that data feed. Um, stuff like that. So I'm collecting data, and somebody's like, oh, hey, I got this over here. And it's an open source data feed. So I run back and add that to my collection plan real fast. And, Recheck all the IOCs and say, okay, this is cool. I've got more data now. I've got more context I can put around this. So always step backwards to go forward and always ask, do I have enough information to go forward? 
Um, remember, intelligence is about act actionable information. I never filter anything out. I never ignore information. It might not be relevant at the time, but I don't ignore it. It gets captured somewhere. And I don't make up information to just tell people to make them feel good. Right? Always sort, correlate, and test it. When it comes to testing, I wish we had more information to go on. Um, if we were to use the previous, that's not the window I want. If we were using the previous Excel spreadsheet to build a, um, man, this is annoying. If we're using this, you can't see it. This is really annoying. I don't computer well. Okay. The hypotheses I would have here, automated attacks, targeted attack, and then I'd go through here and find out which ones actually tied that together um, into into this format, right? Minus means that I've got definitive proof that it doesn't match that hypothesis. I'll put the hypotheses across the top, indicators along the side, and then say, do I see this indicator here? Yes, no, or I have not found it yet. If I haven't found it yet, it stays blank. If it's a definite no, I put a minus sign. If it's a definite yes, I put a plus. If it's super strong, I'll put two pluses or two negatives. If it's super, super strong one way or the other. And then, so in this case, we're saying, oh, it's just random people attacking us by, you know, through their own compromised websites. So hypothesis three, um, in this case, would be the one that, that's weird, is the one that lines up properly. And basically, the, the, the whole point of doing an a, um, ACH isn't to confirm what you're seeing, it's to disprove the other things you're seeing. So it's giving you the strongest possible bit strongest possible answer based off of what you see in your own network. If you really want a good art, a good heavy book to read on this, it's called um, Psychology of Psychology Anal or Psychology of Intelligence Analysis. It's one of the CIA publications. It's really thick. It's really well it's not thick, but it's, it's very psychology and academic and fun to read, but it's you gotta like really love that kind of stuff. And so sharing it out, tell a story. General Paul is known, and I'm going to paraphrase here because I can never remember the exact, the exact quote. Um, tell a story. Tell me what you know. Tell me what you don't know. Tell me what you think. And make sure I know the difference. All right? So you report this to management say, this is what we know for, is, as absolute fact. These are the things that we cannot answer for you at this time because we do not have the answers. We have not been able to find the answers for these. This is why I'm, I'm thinking based on this. All right? And by saying it in that way, you know what I think and what I know, right? So if I'm looking at a, a breakout of um, Pony Botnet, right? We're seeing a bunch of, of boxes hitting Pony. Management wants to know, is this a targeted attack or is this community, com, com, um, crimeware commodity attack, right? Just go out, find out what information you can, see if other people are seeing the same attacks, which again is why I'm having guys actually sit together and talk together. Um, put it out. Anybody not know what the... Well, so put it out in a way that you know what it is, you know what you haven't been able to find. This is what I think it is based on what I see, and then, again, you already know the difference at that point because I told you. Um, anybody not know what TLP is? Not seen it before? TLP was, um, this is the US CERT page. It's sharing beyond you, right? So as the person writing the report or dis um, disseminating the information, you put the color code to it, red, amber, yellow, Red, amber, green, white. Still want to say yellow on that. So I, I want to say yellow so bad. Red means do not share it beyond you. So if you receive something TLP red, that means it goes no further than you. Um, we're running out of time, and I, I apologize for this. Uh, yellow, share it with the people that you absolutely need to, and you absolutely need to in your space. Green, it's pretty much anybody that works with you, trusted, basically. Definitely go read these, definitely start using it, especially if you're sharing out information. Um, white is, anybody can see it. One page briefs work way better than a full report, especially if it's going to management. You wanna make sure it's got, who can see it, right? So there's your TLP. Um, 
But basically the way I do these is a quick report, title, TLP color, overview, why it matters, here's what my recommendations are, and if you need more information, go read these links. And I've had CEOs say this is the best report I've ever seen from anybody. I've had other ones say this is good, but it's not perfect. I want more information. Um, company I used to work at, they tried it. They were seeing eight-page reports, constantly up to the executives. And like, stop wasting our time. I'm like, here, do it this way. Do one page instead. And they came back, we want more of these. So remember who your audience is, what their time limit is like. Try to answer it quick, um, try to answer this stuff. Multi-page reports are great if you're having something that's really big that you have to answer to, right? Um, I do work with the company, my current company's brand protection group a lot. They send me a domain name, of maybe the owner, and say, find all the domains that belong to them. And that's going to be a multi-page report, right? It's going to tell you who the company is, all the domains they own, how I went about finding it, steps I took to actually find the information. And that's my multi-pager. I can't answer that in one, one page. Um, and then you send out hunt lists to whoever is responsible for hunting things in your, in your company. So where I work at now, we have a separate hunt team. I find the additional IOCs. I throw them at the hunt team. The hunt team goes and searches the environment for them. Uh, sharing heat maps. And I'm horribly running out of time. Um, this comes back to where Excel is. Basically, a heat map is just pivotal data. I have completely blanked on how to create a pivotal table. The table. Um, God, this, it's been a bad week. I'm, I'm trying not to get into personal stuff, but it's not been a very good week for me. Um, and I'm just going to stop at that. Um, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So take your spreadsheet, make it into a pivot table, and then, then do conditional formatting on it. Um, and the conditional formatting is going to have color inside it. I really wish I could do it here. If somebody wants to walk me through a pivot table real fast, please do. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. Um, if I had more time, I'd actually stop and look it up. But basically, you're going to take this data, you're going to put it into a pivot table. You're going to say, show me all the ticket numbers that match this criteria, or show me all the IP addresses that match this criteria. You're going to give it two ranges and then tell the, the count your sum. Count your sums. Um, let me find a picture real quick. That's a very not the best not the best one in the world. I wish we could have done it ourselves. Um, closer, I think. Ah. Okay, I'm just having to <laughs> um, Basically, take the information that you get, put it into a pivot table, do the conditional formatting on it. It'll, so when you sum the data that you have, right, how many times does this IP address show up? How many times does this username show up, right? Um, put that together, count, count them as an out of sum, do the conditional formatting to colorize the, the chart, and if you do it right, your your hot ones are going to be red, your green ones are your lower indicator ones are going to be green. And I feel really bad for not because the looks on your face, I, just, I feel really bad about this. Um, link analysis graphs. If you've seen Meltigo, you saw the one with the miss icon. Provide those out to people because they like to see how things are linked together. Pictures tell better stories, right? So the heat map tells a better story than a spreadsheet. A link analysis table tells a better story than a report. Um, share with others. So you have your ISACs, you have your vouch-based system, and the reason I had you all get together in the groups based on your industry is to have you start sharing your information to each other so you have a way to contact each other. So when you start saying, I'm seeing this in my, in my company, are you seeing the same thing? You don't have to give them, the, you're not giving them the secrets to your, your secret sauce. You're not giving them the Coke recipe. You're just saying, I'm seeing this attack method. Are you seeing this too? Um, at this point, I have questions. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them. We've got a few minutes left, uh, about five. Anybody? Questions? Wow. That's never happened before.
Do you guys think you can take this back and make some use out of this Monday? I'll ask you that question. You have one person shaking their head yes. Anybody else? Is this the talk you were expecting? Anybody? Yeah, okay. One person shaking their head. This is kind of what they were expecting. I hope this is informational for you. I hope you can take this back Monday and start putting some of this stuff into effect and start building your program if you don't have one. Or if you're looking at your program and wondering if you're doing it the right way, have some better answers for that. Yes, question. Um, you can. I haven't used Splunk for that purposes. To be honest, I'm not a fan of Splunk. So that's my personal bias. Um, so I am, I actually had an argument recently, recently with my logging team about wanting access to centralized log servers. And they said that Splunk could do a better job than anything I could do with Grep and Auth. And I told them what I wanted. And like, here's the access to the centralized log server. So, I mean, that's my personal bias. That's my personal experience. I understand there are other tools out there to do it, and I don't have the, the I don't have the skill set to answer the question about doing this with Splunk or doing this with Elasticsearch or any of the other tools like that. So I feel bad about not being able to answer it, but I'm I'm coming here from front and saying it's not my skill set. I don't know. But that's a great question. I mean, can you use another another tool like Splunk or like that to do the work? If I was being forced to use Splunk, I'd actually export everything out and then feed it into an Excel spreadsheet because that's what I've done in the past. Yes. So starting points, and that's actually a good question. My last team had 10 of us on it. Um, when they transferred me to the Threat Intel team, there was four of us, and the other three left. So I was, I was the only person there. And I had to, I had to balance the, the, between detection, response, and threat intelligence, plus the threat hunting. So what I did was called IDR plus, or IR plus. I started putting more information based off of Yes, it took me a little bit longer to finish my tickets, but I would go out and get the additional information and put them into the tickets. I started a spreadsheet of doom. And then on a quarterly basis, I would actually pop up with, this is a heat map of what I've seen in the last month, right? And the argument would be like, hey, our ticket system already does metrics. Why does this matter? Yes, my ticket system tells me this ticket was a false positive. It doesn't tell me why it was closed as a false positive or why it was inconclusive. So it's possible to build up, right? And that's basically what the entire thing was about. Take a little bit more time, work the incident, get a little bit more information than you would normally. So if you you stop at, we we cleaned the machine, and now we're on to the next one. If your workload allows, don't stop at, we cleaned the machine and close the ticket. Go a little bit beyond and say, who's, whose software infected the machine? What was the IP address? And just ask a couple questions why and try to answer those questions and add that to the ticket. So you start there and then start ramping up. And as you do that, you'll start creating spreadsheets and other tools or spreadsheets and other collections of information that start building higher and higher and higher. So that's why I was talking about spreadsheets before I talked about MISP, right? You start small, once the spreadsheet stops being useful, start building up. And that's how you go from having a really small team that can't do this, or a really small team that can't specialize in one thing, to show that, hey, if we start specializing, we can do this and start getting more budget. But just don't build an empire out of it. Does that answer the question? Anybody else? Got one minute left. I want to say thank you all for coming to my talk. I hope you take something back to your office and make use of it Monday. Um, again, thank you for coming. <laughs>